Yeah, I, I know what you mean. I've thrown away like so many vlogs where I was like, ew, it's so cringy. <laughs> what am I even doing? <laughs> I feel so cringy with um with TikTok. Like I don't I don't understand the if algorithm. You're, if you don't feel ki- cringy doing TikToks, you're not doing TikTok. Oh, right? thank God. <laughs> oh, we're doing it. Welcome back, one and all. Thank you for listening. If you're new here, this is the Totally Wholesome, Not Dirty podcast, and I'm your host, Molly Stewart. We define wholesome a little differently here, and my guests span everywhere from the adult industry to the vanilla side of humanity. If you haven't, please consider subscribing. Word of mouth is what helps this podcast grow. So share with a friend, leave a comment, download an episode, or anything you can to help with the algorithm. I release episodes every Monday, and if you're subscribed, you'll never miss an episode. You don't want to miss out on all the crazy conversations that evolve here. Um, That's enough from me, and let's get to today's guest. Welcome back to the Totally Wholesome Not Dirty Podcast. I am your host, Molly Stewart, and today's guest is, returning yet again, Jada Kai. Hi, I'm excited to be back. Yes, it's been and, a while. And, I'm, and I'm feeling like weight less <laughs> espresso, <laughs> espresso. <laughs> like, so if you guys have not uh, listened to the ep- other episode that I had with Jada, I think it was really early on, because I think it was like eight or nine. It was something like ages ago. But I was so stressed out on that day, and I had like a panic attack like midway through, which... <laughs> I was so nervous to like, okay, so most of the people that I had had on before I had you on, um, I already knew very well and I was very familiar with We had only worked the one time and then I had all this other external stuff going on and I just like kept having brain farts and I'm like, oh my gosh, she's never going to talk to me again. This is like the worst thing. But I've also worked on that bit of my brain a bit since we last podcasted as well. I love you. I could never like hate you. (laughs) And we've worked together so many more times since then as well, which is, which was super fun. What have you what have you been up to cuz I don't think we've we haven't shot together since we did it was in like Octoberish when we shot for um so your like, birthday? No. Oh, oh, the birthday? Yeah, the birthday would have been after that. Yeah. Oh my god. I shoot so much stuff sometimes. Yeah, just, we like, were celebrating the some order. That was super fun. Dirty 30. That was really fun. <laughs> Oh my god. Um, but besides that, what what have you been up to as far as because I keep seeing you come up in my Instagram feed with all this like weed maps stuff. So are you like partnering with a yes. bunch of people? Like tell me about that because I'm jealousy. <laughs> I am partnered with weed maps now. That's so cool. Yeah. So I actually went to the weed maps um, Super Bowl party back in February and that was so fun. It was up in the like Hollywood Hills and I was like, oh, it's a little fancy for me. (laughs) And I got super high. Um, And they were like, she's high all the time. She's cute. Let's give you free stuff. Yes. So it's been really fun, like getting to know the company more, um, working with them more and all of that. I love them so much. That's really cool. What kind of is, are there other events that you've done for them, or like what what kind of stuff do you do for them? Is it just kind of mostly just promotion, or yeah, mostly like as a like brand ambassador type of deal, I guess. And that's super cool. Yeah, I get to talk about the brand. I get to share them on my Instagram and Twitter, and mm-hmm. they take good care of me. So that's really I like cool. That. Do you find that um, that there's like because I know that I had so I had Cannavative, um on here uh, Darby talked to me a little bit about like their process and everything and they were talking about how it's really hard for them to get traction on social media like like most weed companies because it's mm-hmm. like super censored so my question is kind of like when you're posting stuff that's tagging basically weed maps right yeah. and you're trying to use hashtags or whatever to like get it circulating are you finding that those posts are like more censored than some of your other stuff or do you find that there's not as much of that um i think there is a little bit of censorship surrounding the whole marijuana industry um especially on instagram yeah and like youtube um but weed maps is a little bit different because they're a tech company Mm -hmm. they don't directly sell any weed yeah they just provide um, you where to get it. <laughs> yes, it's just like Yelp of weed. <laughs> yeah, which is perfect. Um, so I've learned a couple things, mm-hmm. like with my Instagram and sharing cannabis content. Mm-hmm. I have to like, mm-hmm. you can't really like smoke it that much on, on Instagram. Like, 
tagging directly to a product will kind yeah. of like because it's like oh you're selling this essentially you're telling people to buy it yeah and, and they were telling me too this is why uh, david has started editing like when we do light up whichever you would like to to dive into first we put like a little sensor over or switch to a different cam that doesn't show it being lit because apparently being lit like is not that that will get flagged and censored but if like there's just smoke around and you're smoke then it's fine then it's okay like i don't yeah. i don't it's crazy it's like there's all these like little nitpicky rules and it's so hard to like adhere to all of them right and i heard that like showing the plant you can't do oh, that yeah yeah but um weed maps actually sent me like this really cool artificial plant by pot plant mm -hmm. and um it's hyper realistic but it's totally fake, fake. i'm like can i show this can yeah because it's so cool I just but everything is so risky yeah i don't know when what I hope I hope the stigma around it kind of ends soon, but I just don't know that it can because one of the things about the internet too is like you're not just catering to the United States, you're catering to basically the entire yeah. world, and so it's like it's not while it's becoming more and more readily accepted here, it's kind of like everywhere else. Again, yeah, like everywhere I'm going to Australia like, for two months, and there's gonna be no weed. Oh no! <laughs> When I come back, I was it... saying I gotta have like a weed party. I was just gonna, like, stone okay, out I my can't life. throw it. I will sleep in like one hour, maybe. <laughs> That's how long I will last. That's how long I lasted on 420. Oh my god, no, four, 420 completely wrecked me. <laughs> it was like, and it was so, it was so silly because it was like, you know, the same, the same type of day as any other day. <laughs> so why am I smoking like way more? I was just absolutely killing myself. Yeah, I was just telling Molly earlier, I was like, Jackie made a makeshift gravity bong with like a Snapple bottle and a Target trash can. It sounds so trashy, but it was... Because it's a trash can. <laughs> it was beautiful. It looked beautiful. <laughs> I did not look beautiful. Oh you looked so adorable that her face was just like... <laughs> No. It was like 520, game over. Me versus 420, I lost. Like, it was not She good. had even invited me over, and I just, like, I knew how things were going to be, and apparently she fell asleep before I even messaged her that I could go. It was like 518, she texts me, and I'm like... <laughs> like, there's four different conversations here, I think. Yeah. I'm going to put my phone down. Go take a nap now. I just, like, stopped replying to everyone. They were like, how was it? I was like, I don't know. I slept through. <laughs> it's kind of nice to be able to just take those days. Because I feel like you're also someone who's so incredibly busy um, that it's nice to have those days. You're, like, you're not busy? <laughs> you're not. Okay. That's just me. Never mind. I'm just projecting my own life. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, think that I'm busy, but I'm really not. I feel like yeah. I'm always, like, I'm so busy. And then I'm, yeah, like, well I guess I guess it's sort of that that is a different thing too because <laughs> I'm the same way. I guess it's like com compared to any other job, I'm not busy. I'm just busy for me, which I like to be not busy at all. So it's right. kind of like. But I feel like I also feed off the stress of having things to do, so I just end up making extra work for myself, like a podcast. So I know, and I'm like, <laughs> I want to start a YouTube and a podcast. <laughs> oh my god, it's so it's so funny. Like it's so much work. If you if you can, if you do start a podcast or something, get an editor. I can highly recommend it. Like straight okay. off the bat, someone to edit your stuff because it takes so much less stress off of like I don't know do you do you ever edit like your own your own content I stuff? edit most of my content um I do have someone that helps me make previews sometimes um but yeah a lot of the times I I'm starting to like put my response like I'm such a control freak no, it's like I, not... I understand you completely <laughs> it's I not a good <laughs> thing it was so hard for me to give up. I've said this before. It was so hard for me to give up, like, the role of editing to David, even though it was me who reached out to him because I knew that he could edit and do that stuff. But it was, like, this whole process of, you know, even, like, the, the last episode we did together, I was still editing it at that point. And I'm sitting there, like, editing and going through the footage, just, like, nitpicking every little, like, facial expression of mine or, like, a little flummox in words or whatever and just, like picking it apart like I almost didn't want to release it and that was like that with almost every episode I did until I hired David thank you David thank you David <laughs> it's like I get too close to it because I was like here's like the one thing that I'm like really doing and passionate about where I'm not showing my body like it has nothing to do with my I mean it has something to do with my job but not with like this part of the job you know <laughs> so it's like it has to be perfect but it's never gonna be perfect yeah so. <laughs> 
I guess our imperfections make us who we are. Yeah, imperfections make us lovable. <laughs> That's what people say. Yeah, but I, I know what you mean. I've thrown away, like, so many vlogs where I was like, ew, it's so cringy. <laughs> what am I even doing? I feel so cringy with, um, with TikTok. Like, I don't. I don't understand the if algorithm. You're, if you don't feel k- cringy doing TikToks, you're not doing TikToks. Oh, right? thank God. <laughs> oh, we're doing it. I just like, so I keep seeing this shit where people are like, well, on TikTok is different. You have to have like a niche. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't have any niches. I like do everything. My niche is big in the house. So. <laughs> yeah, you can't do that on social media. So <laughs> I don't know what to do anymore. So I just like, I just see stuff that I think is cool and I just recreate it. But it's like, even then. I'll go through and it will take me like 50 tries to be like, nope, my mouth wasn't lined up on that lip sync perfectly right there. Like, who gives a shit? No one cares. What am I doing? I love your TikToks, though. Thank you. They always make me laugh. I'm glad. What kind of um, what kind of stuff do you like to post on TikTok? Well, nothing because my TikTok got deleted. Oh, no. Yeah. Why? I don't know. Um... My, I, I started it, I kind of went viral or whatever uh-huh. um, during quarantine, and I think I was making a naked TikTok, and I thought that you could save them, like, privately, uh-huh. and I guess at some point that wasn't okay anymore. Oh, so you can't even just have, like, the private, oh. Yeah, so I thought that doing that... But I've had some taken down before that. I don't know. Yeah. So I'm starting I, over, which is like... It's hard to, to start over. <laughs> you gotta just like... Uh, I don't even know like the, the best way to grow. Because sometimes like I'll think something is so cool or it looks <laughs> real good. And then it's like, oh, it has 100 views. That's, that's real cool. I'll just watch it on repeat. And just those rookie numbers up. Come on. <laughs> I'm my biggest fan sometimes. I'm like, oh my God, it's so funny. I, <laughs> I just sit there like stone my hand. <laughs> like. Um, but yeah, so I didn't even realize that when I was starting it up again mm-hmm. that I was posting it privately, still only for me. Yeah. And they're like, No, you can't you can't even have it privately. <laughs> no, I had no I thought I was posting it publicly. So I was like, Oh, this is why it's not Oh, public. oh, I see. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that's so amazing so yeah but on instagram reels mm-hmm. i've been getting paid on there so oh, that's, that's cool. definitely been keeping me like even further away from tiktok yeah i don't know i i keep going through big periods of shadow ban on instagram so i just leave it alone and i've been trying to go tiktok because everyone says that's where like the best platform for growth and shit is now but i don't even know my top video on tiktok right now is just me doing push-ups <laughs> it has like 500 000, like i don't even know like i have no idea why it is still getting traction after all this because... time i'm like can you look at my <laughs> other stuff this one's really funny <laughs> like, <laughs> but you doing validate. push-ups is so hot well thank you <laughs> <laughs> i do like doing that. i like doing the fitness stuff i'm i didn't like i didn't really realize i guess that's kind of the only niche that I have that gets traction on TikTok for the most part, which is fine. Like, it's cool, like, to actually have started, you know, working out and getting to a point where I'm like, oh, like, I am guess I'm jacked enough for people to be like, oh, I want to watch that again. <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> How long have you been on your, like, fitness journey, I guess? Um, I mean, I've always, <laughs> it's, I talked about this last time because I actually had a, a funny little revelation the other day. Um, as I was going through all my self-deprecation and I was like, wait a minute, I've never been fat. Like I had this idea in my head that I had like these really chunky periods of time, like high school and then a lot in my early twenties and stuff like that. And then I remembered that it was just my ex constantly telling me that I needed to lose wow. weight and that I was too big. And I was like, wait a minute. Cause I was going back through for TikTok and looking for old videos where I wasn't as like fit as I am now, like a before and after. And I was like, even when I was at my biggest, I still had, like, a semblance of ab lines. Like, not, like, abs, but, like, right. like muscle lines. Like, I was bigger, but not, like, I've never been, like, big. I, and I had it in wow. my head that I, like, had this really chunky period. Like, I would go and think of videos, like, oh, I remember this video, and I looked a little bigger there. And I went back and looked at it, I'm like, 
No, I don't. I'm fine. No, I don't. <laughs> so wow, that's so, so it's good been, though. But as far as like actually sticking like with training and being consistent with it, and that was pretty much when I quit alcohol, which was like a year and a half ago now. Okay. So because like I I did stuff then you know before and just kind of like to maintain what I have, um, or what I had. But the alcohol definitely didn't, like, make me consistent on anything, the much less training. It's like you wake up in the morning hungover and your first thought is, I'm going to go knock out some chin-ups or squats. Like, you just want to (laughs) die. So I think quitting that definitely helped. And I kind of used working out as the alternative to drinking when I feel bad. I work out when I feel bad. And it's a much better, like, much better focus point, I think, than just, like, drowning myself in poison. (laughs) wow (laughs) that's crazy yeah no no i mean i think that's such a crazy like shift to be able to like look at yourself and be like wow i did not look bad at all you know what i mean like yeah like it it actually helped my mental like a lot like i was doing therapy um for a while um but i feel i had felt like i kind of had in my head that i was kind of at the point that i was like looking forward to therapy right so that i could tell my therapist about how good my week went and i was like wait a minute that's not what therapy is for (laughs) and so i had like this whole conversation with her and she's like honestly she's like i think doing the podcast helped you a lot because i just talk about i I ended up talking about a lot of the things not as in depth um as in therapy but on the podcast like things about my life and stuff and it got a lot easier to kind of start um just analyzing things from a less negative standpoint, I guess. So I think definitely the alcohol <laughs> helped or didn't help or quitting alcohol. Help. I don't, you know what I mean? Quitting alcohol. Quitting help. alcohol. Help. Help the mental. So, <laughs> but yeah, so I don't know, but it's been a weird experience to kind of like go back through all this time that I thought like, like, Oh, what a piece of shit I am. And like having, I mean, I'm still not the greatest with compliments and stuff, but having to like, actively reject every single one just like, you know like, <laughs> don't look at me. like oh, the goblin but so it's been it's been interesting because it's been it's like a long it's okay so like two it's been almost almost three years now since i got out of my last relationship and um like when i think that's like such a short period of time but it's also a long period of time but then i also had like a decade of time to like undo from before then and so it it, you know i'm it's a work in progress every day but i definitely don't don't beat myself up as much as i used to which feels a lot better (laughs) because everybody else shits on you all the time like why do we have to shit on ourselves so much yeah for sure um when i was younger i grew up in figure skating so Definitely, there was a lot of people telling me that I was fucking fat <laughs> when I was, like, I don't know, 12 years old. Yeah, that's a really good thing that, like, <laughs> a child going through puberty needs to hear. Like, And um, I was asked to do a film with Four Play Films. It's a... Um, it's porn for women, mm-hmm. so there's, like, a little bit more of, like, background story before the, like, porn comes mm-hmm. in. A lot of listeners here have probably never heard of it because they don't know what foreplay is, but... You should check it out because foreplay is super important. It'll give you better sex. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, but she asked me to like open up about my um, like eating disorders like in the past and like body dysmorphia and stuff <clears throat> like that. And I was like, oh, <laughs> like, that's a big can of worms. I don't yeah. know how I feel about that. But it, it was like really good and like almost like therapeutic to yeah like bring that stuff up and be able to like talk about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I I feel like one of the biggest benefits of therapy, like, therapy isn't, like, I I had it in my head, too, like, oh, you just go in and you get fixed. Like, it's not that. It's that you, like, it's, are you a Harry Potter fan at all? Yes, but not the new Dumbledore movie. No, no. Anyway, (laughs) but, like, fear of the name is, like, increases fear of the thing itself, basically. And it's, like, and it's why things like the podcast or why therapy where you're just actively sitting down and talking to someone and you, the more you talk about it, the less scary it is. And the more you can realize how maybe, like, ridiculous something is or, or how inaccurate or, like, different lies that you were basically told and different things like that. And it just gives you, like, this whole new perspective because I spent so long, like, being so unable to talk about 
any of like my past shit like I couldn't do that's why I was drinking so I didn't even have to like think about it you know but I think more people you know it's it's hard that's the biggest problem I think with people is like just communication it's like so many people you know it, what are, what is someone going to judge me based on like what I'm saying or what I've experienced and the more you talk to people it's like holy shit so many more people relate to your trauma yeah. than you think and once you realize that it's like oh it, like my therapist told me this I was like what the fuck like because I was telling her how I was feeling right and I was having like <laughs> day. and I get to the end of my little rant and she's like I just want you to know that everyone has felt like this at some point and I was like, what? <laughs> like, you know, and it's just, and the more you start to hear people and hear other people's stories, you're just like, yeah, like I can relate to you. Maybe not even on our interests, but just on like the core things that make us who we are. And that's like the most genuine type of interaction. I feel like that's where you get the best healing. Picture this. Your shirt is off, the sun is shining, and you're recreating the volleyball scene from Top Gun. Okay, maybe not. But summer is coming and you want to be coming too. If you want to be as smooth down there as Maverick is in the air, check out what my friends at Manscaped have to offer. Manscaped is here to make sure your beach balls are fresh and ready. In summer, you want to kill some cold beers and barbecue, not kill the vibe with stray pubes coming out of your swim trunks. That's why Manscaped has the Performance Package 4.0 to keep the party in your pants looking and smelling fresh all summer long. Dive headfirst into summer by joining the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped uh, and get ready for Hawkeye Summer by going to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping with my code TWND. You've heard me talk about all Manscaped has to offer time and time again, and that's because I love and actually use their products. I keep my man endlessly equipped with the best tools for his jewels, and I also use the Weed Whacker nose and ear trimmer for my own pesky nostrils. But the performance package also includes Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, Crop Reserver ball deodorant, Crop Reviver toner, performance boxer briefs, and a travel bag to hold all your goodies. From the shower to the lake, the Lawnmower 4.0 is waterproof and ready to tackle any of your body's overgrown bushes. Between the travel lock switch, the LED spotlight, and ceramic advanced skin safe technology blade, the Lawnmower 4.0 is the most advanced trimmer I know of. Once the weeds are cleared, check out Manscaped's liquid formulations. Before you head outside and into the heat, use the crop preserver to keep your boys cool and fresh. If you want to step up your grooming game further, take a look at Manscaped's Shears 2.0, a package that has everything you need to look pristine. Nail cutters, tweezers, and grooming scissors. While their performance package will get your balls ready to impress, make sure you cover the rest with the Shears 2.0 so you're ready to perform from head to toe. Get 20% off and free shipping with my code TWND at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with my code TWND at manscaped.com. This is a summer to turn your package into the full package with Manscaped. Yeah, it's hard to be alone in, like, hardships. Like, oh, absolutely. And it, it feels crazy to, like, think that, you know, someone can feel as bad as you do, like, in those moments. Yeah, because, and also, it. I feel like when you're someone who has been through something like that that makes you feel that badly about yourself, you're also like, oh, clearly, I just feel this way because of what a piece of shit I am. So when you look at people who matter to you, right, or people that you look up to or whatever, you're like, oh, like, I aspire to be that, like, I want to be that. Like, they have those same, they have those, not, maybe not exactly the same, but they have such similar thought processes and they have everyone has some type of body dysmorphia or like self-loathing somewhere like everybody has a piece of that nobody's fucking perfect and once you can kind of be like nobody's perfect and i'll never be perfect it's a little bit easier to just like yeah do the best you can yeah for sure <laughs> i don't know would you like um any... yes why don't we her little lighter is so cute it says be a bud yeah <laughs> We met here, Jimmy. So cute. It's like, don't steal my lighter. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I don't know. Oh my lord. What have you been up to? <clears throat> so much work. I've just been uh I've just been prepping. So as soon as we found out in like February that travel was open to Australia, it was like 
all right, it's go time. I'm like, going. like I have been trying to get to Australia since right before the pandemic. So I'm trying now. I'm trying again. So it's just been a lot of prep work. Basically, I've been trying to book a bunch of episodes to kind of like, because I'm not going to be able to fill all the weeks. So I'll just do solo episodes, but trying to get some of that together, you know, uh, backlogging a bunch of content. So I have new stuff that's easy to release, getting all my customs done so that I'm like totally prepared and I, I don't overload myself with work like as soon as I get there, which will be hopefully better. <laughs> do you have plans um, of what you're <clears throat> going to be doing out there? Uh, a little bit here and there. Um, I'm going to check out Sydney. So I'm going to Melbourne, but um, we're going okay. to Sydney a little bit. We want to try to maybe do like the Gold Coast drive. It's going to be winter there. So it's going to, we're going to do a lot of um, coffee exploration because oh. apparently Melbourne is amazing for coffee. Um, so I'm super excited for oh. that because it's the best time of year to just go coffee hobby. It's like, it's like bar hopping, but with coffee. Oh, and it's so much better for I'm me. so jealous. <laughs> so oh, I love coffee. <laughs> Um, oh, I love it because last time we were together, we were talking about traveling because we were in quarantine and I just came back from Mexico and like, you're like, yeah. peace out. I'm yeah, going to. I'm like, I gotta see you before I leave and yeah. go for two months. Oh my God. <clears throat> and it's like also the longest I've been away from like my home space. Like I'm, I have my house sitter is coming and she's staying with my dogs and <laughs> and then they start barking like that. I'm like, it's fine. I won't miss them, but I will miss them severely. <laughs> like, I have um, mm. like Ayn is like uh, my security blanket. My oldest dog. Oh, he was uh, the only dog <clears throat> that I was never. You can pull that whole ashtray and just set it here if you would like. Um, he was the the fella who was there with me like all throughout my relationship pretty much like he understands my moods more than like any person <laughs> ever will <laughs> you know what I mean like he's just I don't oh, know like even beautiful. even my other dogs I love them so much yeah but they didn't they didn't go through that like because I got I got them shortly before <laughs> the divorce essentially so they didn't they didn't live through the yelling and the screaming matches and the slamming doors and the pounding and trying to break down locked doors and they didn't they didn't live through that. So it's like, I have that attention, but they're like my dogs. And Aww. then Ayn is like my child. <laughs> it's like, so I'm, oh, fuck. I'm going to miss him so much. I'm going to cry. He's going to miss you too. <laughs> It'll be good. But they really like my house sitter. So. That's good. Oh, I don't even know. I love your house. Thank you so much. I um, Once I get back, we'll have to shoot some content here now that it's more like <clears throat> shoot ready been shooting a bunch of content here as i'm sure you guys have seen because i don't go anywhere else <laughs> mm. that's amazing what type of content have you been like creating and stuff like that um i've been doing little collabs here and there um usually i'm like a one-on-one -on -one girl mm -hmm. and i've been getting into more like threesomes and i did like a First gangbang thing. That's oh, how, yeah, how did that go? It was fun. What was like the process going into like preparing for a gangbang? Because I've never done that and I, I probably never will. Sorry, guys. Well, it was a reverse gangbang. So it's like reverse. me and a bunch of girls. Oh, okay. That's fine. Yeah, it okay, was um, Brenna Sparks, Kazumi, um, and Jackie Knight was the guy. And um, we were like, we were like office CEOs, you know, like dressed yeah. up in our best business attire. That's amazing. And um, we were looking for <laughs> um, like a new employee. And so we brought him in for an interview. <laughs> and, you know, we we told him to do things and he did the things. That's and amazing. Then... <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> and it was fun because we were like... All these girls in control, like, telling the guy what to do. Yeah, that sounds super fun. It was really fun. fun. That sounds nice. I love when, I love when there's, like, a scenario that you, that you take out in a scene and you get to, like, dress up for it and have a character. It's, like, my favorite thing. Yeah. Like, even, even when I do customs, it's fun to, like, like, I just did one where I'm, like, a professor, right? So I put on, like, a full ass, like... <laughs> 
Like, I put on a suit jacket, like a pencil skirt. Like, I look like a fucking teacher, but not. Like, obviously not. But but it's fun to get into that, that character role. That's why I love doing stuff. Like, especially femdom type content is, like, my favorite. Because you just, like get to become this persona you know yeah. what I mean and I just I flow sometimes like I just I was just doing a custom day yesterday and um, it was like a, a four minute custom and it went for like six minutes because I didn't I didn't pay attention to how long it was going. I just right. got so into like the vibe of like what scenario I had created in my head. <laughs> <laughs> and I get massive word vomit anyway so it kind of just lends itself to those kind of scenes yeah those are the best it's, yeah. yeah, I know I'm the same as you, where it's like, how are you supposed to be able to keep track of time? You know, especially when you get so into it. <laughs> yeah, and and the, the girls I've been working with for customs, like, they do have, like, one of those little timers. But mm-hmm. but it's one of the things when I'm doing, like, a custom that's just, like, oh, just basic dirty talk, that type of stuff. I keep an eye on the timer, but when it's something that it's, like, they don't even have a script, or, but they have, like this whole scene set up that's like my favorite type of custom where it's like here's a couple key things i want you to say but take me on an adventure to this type of scenario and i'm like oh yeah you're like i got this (laughs) and so it's like let me flex my acting (laughs) like (laughs) it's so fun i'm gonna need an academy award for this one (laughs) oh it's just so fun it's like my i think that's one of the things i love the most about shooting um like any of the mainstream porn like I love the hot and mean scenes because I love like the dialogue stuff it's just it's so fun for me (laughs) I wanted to be an actress when I was younger so I mean it kind of worked out I did too when I was little and my parents were like you're gonna be an actress yeah you're like a figure skater and then porn (laughs) (laughs) yeah porn is so fun like I'm thankful for it like all the time even when we were talking about oh I'm so busy and blah 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 but Sometimes I'll just be sitting there, like, have Laura doing my makeup, and we're getting ready for, like, some type of, like, we did a rocket raccoon. Oh, my God. It's adorable. Oh, <laughs> I can't wait to see the, the final a video. Raccoon? Yes, I was. Aww. Here, I'll show you a photo real quick, and David, I'll, I'll give it She's to you. to be in a jumpsuit. <laughs> They're up on the screen. Oh, my goodness. It was fun. So I had this costume made, um, I think it's uh, by Geek crafters like years ago years ago mind you and i just never brought this video to fruition and finally i found this costume i was like i have to wear it so they made that so i so it had a little tail and everything so we shot it with a bunch of like projection and stuff like that but i was having this moment as i'm like putting on my raccoon ears and laura's (laughs) getting my little tail onto my garter and i was like (laughs) i'm 30 years old and I'm dressing up like a raccoon. <laughs> and I'm about a to sexy raccoon. have sex with myself <laughs> with a toy that looks like a tree. <laughs> it's called Root. You fucked Groot. I did fuck Groot. <laughs> I'm like, this is my life. I have trees. I have zero things to complain about <laughs> in my life. Like, I'm living out my childhood dream. <laughs> like, I just, when I was a kid, I just didn't know what that dream was. <laughs> And now it's, I'm like it's fucking Groot. I'm like, all right, it's Groot. I am Groot. I think I said in it like, I am Root. I think I literally said that like because you can't say Groot obviously because whatever. But but and then we'll do the stuff like um, Alice in Wonderland, and it's like my job, our job <laughs> is playing dress up for yes. one, getting to like uh, pre- like getting to make movies, and then we get to have good sex. I don't like. How does it get any better than that? Thank you guys for watching us because thank you. It's, it's super cool, and I never really like, I never really looked at it, it that way before because, like in the past, it was just like, oh, this is the job, and it was just more of a focus of like, you know, I have these you know ranks that I have to hit, or I you know was told, oh, you have to make this much money this month or whatever. And my ex like was very, it was just all about oh money, my God. and it's like now I I have reached it from a place of like really enjoying what I'm doing and like the content has gotten better because of that I think and it's like such a different process to just be able to like create Enjoy stuff yourself. with other people yeah. who are just like also like sexually you know <laughs> open and aware we have proclivities <laughs> and like and you just get to go and just essentially have a great day and especially doing stuff like with content days where it's just like 
y'all already know each other. You get to basically hang out yeah. and have sex. Yes. Like, it's cool. <laughs> I love it. I love it it's so, so much. It's so fun. I'm yeah. really glad that I was censored as a child so I can have this life now. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're homeschooled, yeah. right? Yeah. All the things now. I mean, I was pretty much homeschooled because I went to school from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. Like, that doesn't really yeah, count. <laughs> you were telling me that on the last episode, just like skating school, skating school. Yeah. That I mean. Must have been like so hard to like not being able to like have a, a friend base. You know what I mean? Like that was hard for me as a kid, especially. Yeah. I think it was different too. Maybe because, like, I st- they started putting me in school at first, so I made some friends, and then they took me away from, from So them. You how know long what I mean? were you in school when you did go to school? I was in school second through, f- second through fifth, and then junior high through high school, I was homeschooled. So it's like... Oh, wow. The most fucked up time to be like, oh, I have friends, and now I have no friends. <laughs> like, wow. as you're going through all that shit, like, I didn't have girlfriends to, like talk to about my body is changing (laughs) like i just got you know bullied by the girls at church thank you and um you know like and then when you get out into stuff like this you know not even being like talked to about sorry not even being talked to about like puberty or like boys or like how you should be treated or like you know you know that all that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. and so like Obviously, I married a narcissist. <laughs> like, <you know? laughs> I don't know. How is it for you? Okay. So going to school from 7 to 11, you don't, you're don't. you not really there for, like, the social time. Yeah, like, it's just, like, education. It's just, like, you know, you're just changing classes. You're not there for lunch. So it's, like, you see everyone have friends and everyone's, like, in their, like, little circles and yeah. whatnot. Um, I did have more of, like, a social friend circle, um, in the skating world is what I would call it. Yeah. Um, but a lot of them were homeschooled, and so we were all just, like, little athletes who, like, didn't really know how to be social, I feel like. I love this so much because I'm relating (laughs) to you so (laughs) <laughs> I had the same thing, because, but there was homeschool um, uh, sports leagues, and I was in sports oh. almost year round. So like volleyball, basketball. So I would have all the seasons. So those were the only friends I had. But they were homeschooled awkward kids. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, and like I guess everything's been coming out now that like it's a really fucked up world because there are the age groups of where people are hanging out is such a wide range that it's just like really i would say toxic probably yeah um because it's like younger kids that are trying to like act older and act like they know things and we have no fucking idea yeah (laughs) but it's like it's so funny because you always hear stuff about that right like you know, kids think they know everything and blah, blah, blah. And I've become that person, right? But then I think back and I'm like, everybody was that kid. It's just like when you're a kid, you hear that shit and you're like, well, that's fucking stupid. I do know everything. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's no telling. Like, even if you were younger and listening to this now, even as like an 18 year old, you know nothing. <laughs> like, you know nothing. You know absolutely nothing. You think you do. You don't. <laughs> Man, I thought I had it all figured out. My life was going to be, like, easy peasy. Like, love was squeezy. <laughs> it's not. It's hard. Life is never. I think the most important thing is that, like, life is never what you think it's going to be. Even when you reach a point, like, even now, sometimes I'm like, I know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> like, I know a lot of things that are going on, but then shit surprises me all the time. Or I learn so many. I just found, I have been friends with Laura <laughs> since 2018, I think. Like, the end mm-hmm. of 2018. I didn't know she's, like, a, uh, she plays the violin and the bass. I just found this what? out That's on 420. So cool. I was like, excuse me? She's like, yeah, I used to play in, like, an orchestra. I'm like, what the fuck? This is crazy. It blew 
my mind at the time. It still is blowing my mind. Clearly, I'm still, like, not over it. I haven't <laughs> recovered. But it's, like, it's that kind of stuff. Like, when you think you know stuff, you you typically don't. Especially, like, if you're young. Like, you need to have so many fucked up experiences to start knowing stuff. Like, you're going to go <laughs> through so much shit before you reach a point that you're, like... Oh, that person doesn't know shit. <laughs> that eighteen-year-old kid, <laughs> you're dumb, and you'll be about thirty, probably. Like, yeah, man, I don't know when I'm ever gonna figure it out, but I don't. I don't think that's the thing. It, <laughs> I think that's like not the point of life. The point of life is that you like are always figuring something out. Like, isn't that like the the biggest the joy when you life. like discover something new or like something surprises you? Like, because I feel like, especially as an adult, like when you are young everything is surprising everything is like wonderful and new and crazy and then the more experiences you have the harder it is to like surprise you and that's why you start to like recognize things for what they are but it's so cool when you do find something that you're just like wow that's so cool I'm so glad that I know that now or something like that you know do you play any instruments at school yeah I played the clarinet and I never went to band camp because homeschool doesn't have that (laughs) (laughs) But I did put it in my pussy. No, I didn't. I didn't do that. <laughs> really? You no. have to now. Like you're going to. I feel like I should. I was really, I was something. really good at the clarinet. Actually, like I was first chair. And the funny thing is, um, I cannot and I could not read music. And they didn't figure that out until I was basically graduating high school because I was Sorry asked. By ear. Yeah. So, um, what? <laughs> Ah, so the clarinet has holes <laughs> for your fingers, right? Something I'm very serious with now. <laughs> Good embouchure too. And um, so I memorized what the note was on the page and where my fingers would go based on that note. I don't know if it was like A, B, D, Z. Like, I don't even, I still don't fucking know. I don't know what the different things are called. The ones with the swooshies or like the double one. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> like, I, I don't even think I would know now. But at the time, it was just like, the muscle memory basically of that's what this note is and it made my director really mad when he found out that i couldn't read music and i was first year learning. <laughs> he's like what the fuck essentially but he can't say that because it was homeschool and christian so <laughs> but like i don't that's know hilarious i um played violin Ooh. for fifth and fucking everybody's grade. playing violin up in this bitch like <laughs> i was so bad my parents made me quit um, and I was also so bad that I could not make it to first chair and I saw the music sheet for second chair and I was like, hell no, like You're I like, am no. not playing two notes this whole fucking concert. Yeah. I better be, I better have a bigger part. Yeah. So I like cried my way to like getting first chair, even though I did not deserve it yeah. whatsoever. But they gave it to me. I don't think I deserved it either, honestly. I should have learned how to read music. But I was like, okay, so first I started with the recorder, which is, I was like, clarinet, same fucking shit. Like, it's not <laughs> at all. And and for me, like, I was like, I know how to do this already. I don't need to learn that. <laughs> like, and that's how I am with so many things. That's why, I like, I feel like jack of all trades, master of none, because I'm like, I know enough. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> I don't need to know anymore. There's not enough space in here. I want to learn other things. Yeah, for sure. Like, whenever a new platform comes out, and I'm like, oh, it's going to be just like this. And it's and it's nothing like that. It was like that with TikTok. And I'm like, I don't understand. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. What, like, what, what things did you like to do when you were going through, like, childhood, high school, since you didn't have friends? Like, did you have any free time, like, for yourself that you... Would, like, did you collect anything weird? Like, I collected a lot of weird shit. Like, I don't know. Sometimes I wonder if I'm, like, on the spectrum. Like, I don't even know. Like, I'm so... I'm just, like, so weirdly neurotic about random things. And when I find out how many people didn't collect things growing up, I'm like, what? Am I okay? I, <laughs> like, I so kind of much. collected Beanie Babies. I was, like, a little child um, hoarder, I think. Like... I was, like, attached to, like, a lot of my belongings, even though they were, like, super cheap, janky things. Oh, my God. Like, I would hold on to, like, my, (laughs) my, like, Happy Meals. um, All the Happy Meal toys. And 
Also, because I was in sports, I was super superstitious. And I would like, I would have my like little duck beanie baby. It was my lucky duck. And then I had my, it was um, Petrie from, from um, Land Before Time. Oh, Petrie! <laughs> He had like um, a little button oh, on his shit. back They're and like little wings, and I would keep that in my skating bag. And yeah, I would just like collect random shit that I like gave meaning to. <laughs> oh my god, I I relate to you so hard. That's crazy. I had like so I had a spoon collection. You know, like <laughs> <laughs> I collected spoons. Do you know what spoon... So people probably don't even know, but I had... Do you, So you know about spoons. I know about spoons. So when you drive across state lines um, <laughs> at truck stops, they have decorative have, like, spoons. That's spoon like, magnets. you were here. And <laughs> I had so many spoons. My dad, bless his heart, he built me display racks. <laughs> I love you, dad. For my spoons. <laughs> I was like, clearly... These need to be on my wall so everyone can see all the places I've been with my cutlery. Like, what the fuck? I don't even know if the spoon still exists. Like, he got me a spoon from Mexico when he went to Mexico on his own once. Aww. Like, spoons, rocks. I was like, this is I a cool rock. Rocks. This is a sweet rock. I had so many boxes under my bed, like shoe boxes of just like random rocks. I had a rock tumbler. I was like, I'm gonna make them shiny. <laughs> like, I collected animals that I wasn't supposed to have. <laughs> like, I don't regret saying this, but <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> I collected spoons. I can tell you a bunch of other okay. words that I collected about. Oh my god, I hate myself right now. <laughs> I remember if, like I was five, okay? I was five years old. And I started collecting my boogers <laughs> on my wall for some fucking reason. And then my uh, my mom saw them and was like, oh, yeah. what are we going to do? And I, yeah, so that, no. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm I, sorry. I didn't I, have to tell you that. I, I, I didn't have, sorry. I got you. I have two gross <laughs> stories that are going to make you feel better. All right. So I had a day bed. <laughs> now, for those who might not know what a day bed is, it's kind of like, it looks, it looks, there's like a headboard, but the headboard goes against the wall. And then there's just a twin bed with two, like, ends on it, if that makes sense. Okay. David put a twin bed on the green screen so they can see what I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway, so it was up against the wall, and, it like, the, the headboard on the wall had these, like, little um, white cylindrical poles. I picked my nose, too. And I would put them... <laughs> put them because oh like God. i was couldn't be fucked to get out of bed and so i would just pick my nose at night while i was reading a book under the blanket <laughs> <laughs> and fucking put my bookers like on the back of like the white little beams so you couldn't see them they were on the wall they were just on the bed so it was fine <laughs> and i picked my nails and chewed them and whatever and so i would like shove my toenails <laughs> down behind oh my God. <laughs> Like, and so my mom would like go to change the sheets and stuff and flip it over and like nails. Like. <laughs> that was so fucking gross. <laughs> oh my god. Did you, um. <laughs> did you ever. I'm thinking about weird shit that I collected and did as a kid. Oh my god. <laughs> would you ever do those things with like a yarn? This is probably going to sound totally stupid. I wish I had yarn to demonstrate what I'm talking about. And you would loop it like this, like around your fingers yeah. and stretch it out and then tie one in the middle, cut all the ends and it'd be a fluffy poof ball. Yeah. So now, do you know the popcorn tins that you get at holidays and all the popcorn yes. is stale? So I had probably six of those <laughs> popcorn tubs full of what I named warm fuzzies in varying sizes, <laughs> colors, and I would just throw them around on my floor and like lay in warm fuzzies and then I like, put them all back in the thing like you would put that away like it yes. was like you would take them out yeah and then you would put them back yeah or some of them would be like up on my little you know de decoratively like placed <laughs> around but there times? were so many that they needed to be even they needed a space to go <laughs> like there was so many of them I don't even know how much yarn like I went through as a child like just making these puff balls like so I'm like I don't that's, know if I'm okay <laughs> that's so random I know I love it. 
I was like the kind of person too as a kid that would like just be like I'm gonna be into this thing and then not and then lose interest yeah like, as soon as you weren't like perfect at it yeah yeah for sure I mean even with like things I would buy I mean for you I'm like so how many times did you take your poof balls out and put them back in so many times stop playing with them like i was like a one toy i think those were in my room until like i moved out of the house when i was like 17 18 like i think they were there for the entire time like i i might have even taken i think i did did i take some i think i took some when i moved out like the best ones like the really thick ones that were like really poofy because i'm like these are like pillows you know (laughs) Um, what else did I play with? Like, and all of my collections were like half collections, I guess. (laughs) Half collections. I mean, I hate that you guys know that I have a booger collection. (laughs) I really do. Don't worry. But (laughs) I had boogers too. We all picked our nose. We were all children. (laughs) My mom was like, okay, so this is not okay. (laughs) We're not going to do this anymore. Okay. Yeah, I eventually gave up the booger thing and just went to the nails, which I still do to this day if I don't have acrylics on. <laughs> like, it's the one habit that's just, like, it's stuck with me my entire life, and I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. Mm. It's, like, my stress mechanism. This is what I did instead of smoking when I was a child, and now I do both, so the stress has increased. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. But, yeah. I mean, other than skating, I was... I was super into, like, AIM, though. Oh, and, my like, God. And um, texting. You ever think, like, how many times we could have been, like, abducted? <laughs> like, our parents had no idea what we were doing on the internet yeah. at all. And, like, I was smart enough to clear the browser history <laughs> or whatever. But they didn't even know. They barely understand the internet now, much less back then when it was, like, new. Yeah. And the, the amount of people I talked to online that probably should not have like oh you i think i would go into like random chat rooms yeah every so often i was on forums and shit doing fan fiction and weird shit like i don't even know oh yeah. see i was just like an aim and i would talk to the same like skaters that i like hung out with all day well, i had like i didn't know anybody uh-huh. And so it was like, for me, I was like, oh, internet is my people. <laughs> like, I, <laughs> oh my God, I, I used to write dirty fan fiction. Like, like, I had this group of girls and they were all girls. I think I've told this story before, actually, on this show. But like, I knew they were all girls because we actually like are still friends on Facebook to this day. And I've like watched them like grow up into like whole ass people. In the show. I was like, <laughs> man, I'm really glad none of you guys were like trying to rape me or something. Like, <laughs> like that could have gone real bad. Full on weirdos. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I don't even know. The internet is a scary place. <laughs> That's crazy. We were there when the internet was growing up. I know. Dial-up. <laughs> I grew up on that dial-up and Neopets, man. <laughs> like, I don't even know. Oh, I always wanted to play Neopets, but I never did. My parents thought that video games were, like, the devil. So um, my, I was lucky my dad liked them. My brother bought me like a Nintendo when I was really young, and then my dad was like, "No, it's gonna make you dumb." <laughs> so he like trashed it right away. Oh no! And um, I remember when I was getting into um, video games, like I didn't even know how to like walk, yeah. and it was just like facing the ceiling. <laughs> like, how the fuck do people play this? Yeah. But now I, like, play a little bit of what's, video games. What's your favorite, like, stuff to play? Um, I really like Grand Theft Auto. That's awesome. <laughs> there was a time after I left my contract in Thailand, and then I was, like, kind of, like, in an in-between period. Um, <clears throat> at the time, like, Jackie was just working, and then I was just, like, chilling at <laughs> home, not, like, teaching, like... A few days a week, you know, yeah. that was my life at the time. And I would play Grand Theft Auto all day. And I had my, like, Grand Theft Auto friends. <laughs> and I never That's knew awesome. what I was doing. And That's the cool thing with Grand Theft, Theft Auto, though, is you don't need to know what you're doing. Because you can do whatever you want. Yeah, right? I would just, like, do a couple races <laughs> here and there and, like, try yeah. to do these obstacle courses. <laughs> 
<laughs> the amount of hours, months, years that I poured into Skyrim. Oh, God. <laughs> it was not okay. <laughs> it was a lot. Now I like to play, like, <clears throat> my favorite, like, unwind game for the night is, like, Halo. I love to just go, like, online <coughs> multiplayer and just shoot people. It's nice. It's, like, a really good way to just release all the stress of the day because you're just like, fuck! You can't! And then you just kill, you know, kill the other team. is cool. And, like, I play so consistently in the evenings that I now have, like, the usernames that pop up that I'm like, oh, motherfucker, it's on. <laughs> it's fucking on, like Donkey Kong. I don't even fucking know. <laughs> they make me so mad, and I love it. <laughs> I got really into this app game called Mac Robots, or is that what it's called? Mac Robots. Did you play? Oh, okay. The only game I play on my Mac This is a robot games. game, and I was like, I'm spending money on this now. Now I'm mm. going to spend more money on this. <laughs> But I was like, Jackie, you and I, like, we're fucking good at this. Like, <laughs> I think it's good to have those little distractionary things. Like, I, I love played it unwinding so with a video game. It's it's so chill. Like, and I feel like I, I try to get into so many shows and movies and stuff, but just like, it's hard to hold my attention. Like, just nothing new is really like vibing with me. I was watching like Queen of the South for a while and I got bored of it. Like. You know, I don't know. It's nothing holds my attention, but a video game is always something because it's like you're doing it. So it's I feel like it's something mm -hmm. that's active. I mean, it's not active, <laughs> but it feels more active. And like, at least you have like some control over what's going on. Maybe I'm just a control freak. I don't know. Oh, you might be more of a control <laughs> freak than me. <laughs> Perhaps. Because I, yeah, I like binge shows really bad. I, I binge shows. <laughs> like, like, don't get me wrong. If I find something that... I'm like, oh, this is really good, and it, like, hooks me. I'll binge my way through it. But then it's like, well, then I have nothing else to watch. And so it's like, well, the video game. Yeah, and then I get so sad, like, <clears throat> after shows are over. Or when they start sucking, like, they stretch it out too long. I got, like, like that... I get so, like... <laughs> <sighs> Sorry, David. Sorry, you. <laughs> you have to hear that, too. <laughs> yeah, no, I... Yeah, it's, it's tough to get, like, really invested <clears throat> in a show. And then binge your whole way through it, and then you're just like, oh, I gotta wait, like, what, one, two more years for this? <laughs> Did that with, like, the boys. I've done that with every show that just captures my attention, and then I get depressed, because I'm just like, oh, it's over. And yeah. then you get that super rush when suddenly it's back, and they're like, oh, the second season. I'm like, oh! <laughs> it's so exciting. If that's exciting, I think I'm old. I mean, I, yeah. I don't know. I think everyone gets like that, probably. Maybe. I don't know. I feel like the simplest things just what was the last... excite me now. <laughs> what was the last show you, like, binged like that? Narcos Mexico. Narcos. That's why I tried to do Queen of the South, and I'll get back into it. But it started off pretty good, but then it's, like, in a slow... Like, I'm just bored of it. And the acting is, like... Some of it's really good, and then some of it's really not. And so sometimes it's just like, oh my god, this character is too much. I need a break. <laughs> like, I can't, you know? Because only, that's so funny. Yeah, that cartel stuff is fucking crazy. Have you watched any of the? Mm -mm. It's wild. The last show I got really into was Money Heist. and I've heard of that. What's, what is it about? Um, It's in Spain. They rob, like, the so bad at explaining shows. <laughs> they try to rob this thing. Yeah, they try to rob a place and stuff, you know. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a cool story behind it. They're getting it's money really cute. from yeah. a heist. Yes. I got it. And it's in Spain. Yes. That's awesome. It's in Spanish. Do you like to read your shows? I do sometimes. I've gotten super into subtitles um, because <laughs> of my dogs because <laughs> they're so loud. They just like... I don't know what it is, but, like, they can be dead asleep. And then as soon as I want to sit down and watch something, they're like, I'm going to wander all over your hardwood floors with my little clicky clacks. And I'm going to make all the noise. And then I'm going to decide that I have zoomies. And I'm going to be... <laughs> but it sounds like... <laughs> like, all the way across <laughs> the floor. And I'm like, I can't... I don't want to, like, blast my eardrums out. But I want to be able to know what's going on. So subtitles are cool. And I understand it now. 
<laughs> like I used to hate subtitles because then I would just like only read it. So I think I could probably do it. Yeah, I get I started watching like Korean dramas. Thank you, quarantine. Now I'm like, <laughs> I know what shows I like. <laughs> you know? Basically. I'm a TV like, expert now. Yeah, like what what else do you do? It's like I I thought like it was so funny the memes like especially when it was like super locked down because it was just like Netflix are you still watching and it's like the fuck else am I doing <laughs> like of that course makes me I'm feel still bad watching. about it of course I am I'm here alone and clearly no one loves me yes TikTok I'm still here <laughs> like the, I know it's been six hours <laughs> that's why oh I can't God. like I, it was TikTok so rough. is like such dangerous <clears throat> territory. Because of that. And I'm, like, afraid, like, once I start to, like, I don't know, make it grow again. Like, actually take it more seriously. <laughs> like, yeah. I should. Um, I feel like I'm just, just it's just going to suck me in. And Yeah. Well, <laughs> what, what I like to do with it is when I'm, like, all right, I have some free time and my makeup is done. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm going to start scrolling find a bunch of TikToks and I just do them all. I draft them. And then I just have a TikTok to post every day until I feel like doing TikToks again. You know what I mean? Um. And then I don't have to like, you know, fuck with it. And then the other cool thing that I've discovered, <laughs> I've just discovered this. Hello, I'm ancient. <laughs> <laughs> Is that you can, <laughs> you can reply to people with a video. So essentially if you get like... I love trolls. Thank you. Keep it coming. <laughs> you can reply to them with videos. And so their shitty little shithead comment is right there in your video. And you get to reply to it however you want. And it's beautiful. And it gives you just free content all the time. And then you log off and just let the internet eat this person. And it's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like... <clears throat> but at first I was doing like the whole like every day I log in. I'm like, okay, every day I'll make a new TikTok. But it was so exhausting and so if you just have time just like make a bunch draft them and then just post them whenever you're like oh i should post a tiktok and then you don't have to deal with it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how to not get addicted to tiktok yeah it's hard <laughs> <laughs> because i would my problem was is i would be on tiktok and i would scroll I'm like, oh, I'm going to make that one, and then I'm going to make that one really good, and then I'm going to make that one, and then never do them. Yeah. Well, what and I... It was just the scrolling app of things I was never going to do. What I try to do <laughs> is like, okay, so my For You page is basically just t content TikTok things I should make. Like, it's nothing <laughs> that, like, I'm like, wow, I'm super invested in, like, what this is. Like, <laughs> it's nothing I really care about. It's just, like... <laughs> Like, it's basically now showing me mostly, like, fitness girls doing shit because they're like, oh, you have arms. I'm like, cool. And so now I just, I copy a bunch of those or what I do is, like, I'll save them and then I just know which ones to make. And then when I have the time to do it, I'm like, oh, here are the ones that I'll do real quick. I do it mostly all in the same, like, outfit or I just switch my look real quick <laughs> <laughs> and just fucking grind it out because... Nothing on TikTok has been that interesting to me because it's just showing me things that I should do, <laughs> like for work, oh, essentially. Okay. Yeah, mine had like some, I guess, clickbaity things that I definitely ate up, like oddly satisfying, like <gasps> oh, hydrocolic press. Like, <laughs> you know what will help? What? All right. So in your privacy settings, so if you go to your settings in your phone okay. and you go into TikTok, turn off the allowance for the microphone and like photos and camera type stuff, turn that off when you're not using the app. So it can't listen to you because it listens all the time. And so oh. when you're in there, it will show you exactly what you want to see because they've been <laughs> listening to you all day long. And it's like, I can keep you here for years, <laughs> you know? So that's what I do. I fucking turn it off when I'm not using it until I need to use the camera to actually film something. So then what I do is I start scrolling. So since it doesn't even know what I want, it's just showing me what's trending. Oh. So when I can see what's trending for whatever it thinks my niche is, then I just do that. Turn on the camera. Do the thing post it turn it off yeah. it doesn't listen Oof. i'm like bangs oh, i need a haircut ducks. so much like... <laughs> <laughs> but, 
<laughs> it's very dangerous because when I did have it on, it was that. It was showing me all this corgi shit. And I was like, I could have another. <laughs> And I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Stop it, TikTok. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> oh, my God. <clears throat> do you have anything fun that's, like, coming up for summer? Now that, like, the weather's starting to get nice again? Oh, the, the rain today. What the fuck was that? I know. I was like, ew. It's like... I woke up, and I was already in such a bad mood. And I looked outside, like, when I let the dogs out to pee, and it was raining. And my face went from, like, this to, like... I know. I was like, maybe I don't have to do anything. To the gym. Today. Yeah, maybe I could just. I'm like, go oh my god! Like it was so bad, and then all of a sudden it got super sunny, and now it's kind of gross again. I don't know what Vegas is doing. I know, dude. The windstorm that happened. Oh my lord, that was crazy. Yeah, I like broke out in hives for like a week after. <laughs> I get, oh my god, my sinuses get so bad that sometimes I'm like, do I have COVID? And then I take, like, the Sudafed, I'm like, oh no, I'm just, like, dying from this air pollution, like, it's not okay. Yeah, every time, I'm like, I am, I finally got it, it got to me, you yeah. know. Have you got I was like, I got vaccinated! Yeah, well, I I only got vaccinated because I'm going to Australia, and if you're vaccinated, apparently now you don't need a COVID test, a 24-hour COVID test, that's cool. Oh. And so that's fun. Um, I forgot where I was going with that. Oh, yes, but I did have COVID. Um, like, in 2020, I had it. We had it together. And I didn't really have that bad okay. of an effect to it. But I was like... That's mm. good. No. I had my... I've, I've been really lucky, wood. though. Like, most of... <laughs> most of my life, I've... You should put wood there, too. Can you turn that in hindsight, wood? In hindsight, make that wood. And... Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Don't do the other one. I just did the thing. <laughs> I'm so stoned. I apologize. <laughs> I forgot what I was saying. Oh, I've been really lucky. Um, Most of the time, like, even when I was a kid, like, my brother was sick, like, all the time. And he had, like, asthma and whatever. And now he's, like, a giant human. And I never got sick, like, almost ever. I, like... Don't get me wrong. I got, like, fucked up shit happened to me, like, all the time. Like, I think I'm just the most accident-prone pers like, accident person that I know. Like, when I was a kid, apparently, in parking lots, I used to just, like, walk between cars and just whack my head into the rear view mirror. <laughs> like, I couldn't fucking see where I was going. I have perfect vision. <laughs> like, it's just, I've always been that. I've broken my skull. It's the only bone I've ever broken. Like, figure that one out. <laughs> like, it's, I'm not okay. <laughs> Something's wrong in here, I think. But it's all right. I'm happy. <laughs> um, God, what was I going to say? <laughs> oh, oh, COVID. And you haven't gotten it? I haven't gotten it. Oh, I was going to talk about how, fun fact, I used to be the kid that would, like, get sick a lot. Mm. Um, I ended up getting, like, swine flu when it was swine flu, and then they changed it because they were like, that sounds gross, I guess, to H1N1. Oh, uh, yeah, shit. I remember And that I moment. had it. I didn't know that I had it until after I got my results back. Um, I was at, like, U.S. regionals at the time. Oh, like, shit. Like, trying to qualify for sectionals to go to nationals mm -hmm. for skating. And... I, it was so bad. I couldn't walk. Like, oh my God. yeah, I was so dizzy. And somehow I like pulled it together for like a program. And that is I was crazy. able to like, I think I ended up winning the thing. But oh, I wow. was so sick. And I was like terrified of getting um, COVID because I was like, oh, it's probably going to be so much worse. But I, I haven't gotten for it sure. yet. That's but why. did you get be. fully vaccinated, I assume? Yes. Yeah. Um, did you have any, um, did you end up having any effects, like, from the vaccination? Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> my arm. And I'm, like, such a paranoid person. Like, okay, my arm started getting sore, and I was like, okay. Like, they told me my arm was going to get sore. And I was like, it was just progressively getting worse. Yeah. Um, throughout the night, the day that I got it. And you're like, am I dying? And I was like, my arm is going to fall off. Like, <laughs> because you always hear like the anti-vaxxers talk yeah. about how like, well, so-and-so died from it after they got their and vaccine. And then she's over here watching TikTok and it's like, you're going to die. <laughs> and she's like, oh. And I would see, you know, like, um, people that 
I don't know, like, would have, like, severely bruised hands and, like... Yeah, like, everybody was, had a different reaction. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, my God, like, I'm not going to be able to, like, use my arm ever. And I'm, like, full-on freaking out about it. I'm like, like, what, what if what I if? just have this arm that doesn't do anything? <laughs> And I was like, every internet thing that I saw was like, it's like going on WebMD, you know? Yeah. Like, that's what was happening. That's what, the internet is a dangerous place. <laughs> you can find anything there. Um, but other than, like, <laughs> my, the arm thing, and I think I was just tired for, like, two days. Yeah. I slept a lot. Yeah. I, um, I got vaccinated, like I said, just so I could travel, because I was like, I... I didn't feel like I needed it. I was like, maybe eventually I'll get it, like, if I feel like I need it. But my, I had such a, like, base nothing reaction when I had COVID. So I was like, it'll be fine. But I get the vaccine. <laughs> and I was like, they did it. It hurt a little bit, but it felt fine. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go home and do bench press. <laughs> and I'm going to do chin-ups. I'm going to throw some pull-ups in there, too. And I'm going to do push-ups. I thought my arm was going to fall off. Like... It got to a point that, like, <laughs> I was like, did I strain? Like, this is a pretty normal routine for me. Did I, like, strain it because of the vaccine? Like, I thought that it was just, like, it felt dead. Like, my whole shoulder just was on fire. <laughs> it felt like there was just a knife. Like, any time I moved up or down, it was just the yeah. most horrible thing. And then the next day, I felt sicker than when I had COVID. <laughs> Like, I was just like, I can't even think. I can't think at all. Like, I can't even hold a single thought in my head. And I just, like, <laughs> laid in bed. I was, like, trying. Like, my DMs must have been so fucked up that day. Like, I was just like, am I okay? <laughs> I couldn't remember. Like, I was having, like, short-term memory. So I was like, this is fine. And then the next day, I was fine. I was like, this is the most bizarre shit. Did your... How long did your arm hurt for? My arm hurt for probably like six days after but like i didn't feel sick the rest of the time oh. just a little like disoriented like that fu like fuzzy head yeah like a little bit but not like the first day was just like i was i was not okay <laughs> yeah i was like i need i was like this, this not gonna work anymore my own <laughs> like <laughs> it's like having the worst trip but you did it yourself yeah like... <laughs> But I was fine. Everything was okay. My arm worked. She's like, like look. <laughs> but yeah, I was really scared. I don't know why I get like that. No, but I mean, it's, that's one of the things about the internet. And then especially like being so isolated as everybody was during that time <laughs> where it's just like anything crazy is being fed to you. And you're like, what's real? What's not real? I don't fucking know. <laughs> and you could just panic. You could find, you know, panic about anything. And that, like anything on the internet you want to find somebody to tell you that the sky is actually green you're gonna find it and you're gonna have all these studies about it you know like whatever <laughs> and so it's just and then you don't know what's happening everybody else is making you feel panicked and then your own brain is already on full <laughs> insanity and then you have fucking the weird fuzzy covid brain and you're just like am i dying <laughs> it's crazy but it all turns out and it's fine. We're both. Okay. And apparently Putin killed COVID. It's not a thing anymore. <laughs> like things are okay. suddenly fine with COVID. Like nobody's even it's it's crazy. It's wild how all of a sudden it's just like not even a thing anymore. Yeah. I think they're not even doing um masks on domestic flights anymore. Oh, that I thought it was on happened. all flights. I saw people on Instagram like take I, off I, their masks. Maybe it's international, but I thought what I what I had read was domestic, but it could okay. be international now. I don't even know. That was just know. the last thing I saw, and that was like maybe a week ago or something. When I went to Mexico, everyone was still wearing masks. Um, and then when I came back to Vegas, like I kept on forgetting or feeling like I was forgetting my mask. Yeah. Um, oh, that was annoying. Yeah, but. I'm really glad that's not a thing anymore, especially now that the weather is like. See now, it's fine. This is like a Michigan day. What's happening? It's so beautiful out right now. A Michigan day. Yeah. Michigan is like, you know, all four seasons in one day <laughs> type of place. Oh, I'm yeah, really glad I don't like live that anymore. Now. Yeah. It's been crazy. I don't even know. <laughs> oh. But wait. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, did, did you mention any big projects that you have coming up for the summer? Do we get distracted? Um, 
Okay, so next month is May. I'm excited because I'm going to be working with um, Hot Movies Official. Oh, that's awesome. That's actually when this is coming out in May, so... Oh, Perfect. nice. So, yeah, so this month um, you'll be seeing me showcase um, different Asian American performers. Ooh, yeah, and we're cool. going to be going on Instagram Live and we're just going to sit and chat. That's it's awesome. Fun. That sounds super cool. Yeah. We're going to be celebrating Asian American Month. So, that's okay. really awesome. I'm really pumped about that. For sure. Where can they find, tell them where they can find you so they can follow you to go see all the stuff that you're doing? Um, so, if you go on Instagram, you can follow Hot Movies Official. You can follow me on Instagram and I'll guide you there too. So, yeah, just follow us both and you'll be seeing me go on a few times a week. Okay, and, cool. Yeah. I'll have to tune in because I'll be in Australia. Yeah. Fuck. That's going to be crazy. It's going to be weird watching this back. That's cool. I won't be high. Hello, sober me. Aw. <laughs> Hi, sober mom. <laughs> Do you have any final okay. words to leave with our guests? Um, I guess. I Listen. mean, you guys know where to find me. Official Jada Kai on Instagram. And from there, you can find all my links. Um that's all I guess. that's all so go find her content go support her on all the other cool stuff that she does and we'll see you next week thank you for listening bye bye <laughs> <laughs>